All right, is this the end of the guitar players? Obviously not. Now, for some reason, when it comes to making guitar instruments in MIDI, that's, you know, like crushes the internet and it's a black hole and people start screaming and crying. Just like drum libraries were not the end of drummers and bass libraries are not the end of bass players, uh, really good high quality guitar libraries won't be the end of guitar libraries. That being said, the Odin version 3 is a massive improvement over the second version that came out many years ago. So let's just go ahead and listen to the example that I came up with. That obviously sounds ridiculous, and it's significantly easier to program than it was even with Odin version 2. Now, I have spent many years programming guitars for pre-productions, my own ideas. I really like to use these kind of guitars when I'm writing music because it allows me to just grab the MIDI and move it however I want instead of having to re-record the guitar part over and over. Or what has happened often in the past is I'll start writing a guitar, for example, in C-sharp tuning, and then I'm like, eh, I wonder what this would sound like in drop A, or I wonder what it would sound like in E flat. And it's significantly easier just to grab the MIDI and move it up and down the piano roll where I can hear it immediately in a pretty good high fidelity example and see if I like it or not. So before anyone loses their pants here and saying, oh, this is ridiculous, you know, MIDI isn't real music, just, just delete all that shit out of your head. If you've been listening to music uh, since the 70s, there have been, you know, fake music for decades, all right? Uh, there's nothing fake about this. I still have to program it in. You still have to program it in, and you still need to think of the melody in your head. This just allows people who maybe can't record a guitar, uh, can't, for example, I'm not a solo guitar player, and even recording something as simple as this solo, for example, uh, is difficult for me because I just don't have the dexterity in my fingers, and I can't get the idea out the way that I want. Or I would have to record this piece by piece by piece, and it would just take forever. And in this particular way, I could at least demo my idea and then send it to somebody who could play guitar for me. For example, uh, Tom, Tom, Tommy. I have Tom do a lot of my guitar solos when I want to work on music. All right. So uh, as an instrument, as a songwriting tool, this is hands down probably the best. As you can see, uh, contact is not required. Just it loads as a VST instrument, for example, in Cubase. Just loaded as a VST instrument here. And I have to say, it loads nearly instantly. Now, even with Odin 2 on the pretty good machine that I have, it still took, you know, 20 seconds thereabouts to get everything fully loaded to where I could start working with it. This is a near instant load. I don't know what kind of black magic they did on the back end of this, but it loads practically in instantly and it works perfectly. Uh, I have multiple instances open here. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five instances of the Odin 3, and it just works flawlessly on the machine. I have literally no complaints, and programming this was very easy. I'll talk about some of the things I did for programming, okay? Uh, the interface has been updated. It does come with included amps if you want to do that. I just used the DI. And truth be told, I just used uh, some presets that I created that I sell on my website, chernobylaudio.com. These are the Marshall Metal presets. I just changed it to fit the song. Uh, so obviously it works well with amp simulators. You can get crushing tones. Uh, everything here is just one of my presets. Like this is my uh, old school black metal pack, soloing in church, just changed for the guitar tone. Cleans are the same. 
it's one of the clean sounds from my old school black metal pack again you can find that on my website but let's so but if you don't have those things you can just click rhythm leader clean and it has an included amp in it uh, max told me it's some kind of variation of a 5150 it really didn't ask for a lot of details but there's an included amp here if you just want to get started writing immediately uh, there's a couple of different presets here based on what you might want to do so pan rhythms di uh, these are panned immediately or you can pan leads and it's just does automatic panning so you can do one midi track to write uh, whatever you might want to do uh, when it comes to doing multiple tracks though however i would imagine i would suggest to do like your double tracking so what you want to do is you want to insert uh, guitar one solo it, it already was inserted i don't know why it was like that but guitar one solo well then you have uh, a completely different set of samples being triggered on the left ear versus the right ear and that's very important so you don't have phase issues and so you get that big wide sound that you would be going for so uh, the main panels here are very easy to understand uh, humanize you can pick the different bridges here neck uh, modern uh, i'm guessing this means definition i'm not really uh up to date with fishman influence pickups these are fishman influences with an evertune bridge that was one of the things that was really hard to deal with in the beginning i know a lot of people really like shreddage and these things but uh those earlier instruments had intonation issues and they were out of tune it was just the way it was it was still early days in the technology also learning how to route all that stuff in contact was a big pain in the ass don't have to worry about any of that here insert the plugin you're done and there's a lot of things that are automatic here that make programming so much easier than it used to be even five years ago. So we have these different tabs here that we can cycle through and we can just change the structure of how the instrument is going to work. And so we can soften the attack, we can force the vibrato and then how fast, how many cents it should move. Uh, string selection mode, we can do position one, position two automatically, or we can do it manual. So you have all the control. Uh, for example, if you're doing a, gu a guitar solo, you can actually uh, play the frets exactly that you would play in real life. All right, human noises, you can increase or decrease the amount of string uh, noise, muting, or left hand stretching on, on the fretboard. And then auto chord delay. Now, this is a great thing to feature uh, that they have now. I still programmed like I was using Odin 2. Let me show you guys what I mean. So if we go to the chords here, you can see I've offset the chords a little bit for string travel time. It's, it's kind of similar to programming drums where if you're going cymbals, if you're going to hi-hat to like a crash on the right side of the kit, you might want to skip one of the hi-hat hits for hand travel time. This is the same exact concept where just it's pick travel time through all the strings. And then all the velocities are changed based on, you know, how the string or the pick would go through the strings, right? The first string, you're probably going to hit the hardest. And as you as you pick through all the strings, the velocity will kind of die off a little bit and you get a very realistic sounding chord. Let's go ahead and solo that. Super realistic. It's, it's very impressive. Uh, but the programming aspect of this has been improved dramatically. So it's a lot faster to get the ideas out. And then there are velocity triggers that you can do for palm meets and things like this. Uh, so, and then you can uh, actually engage the auto slide and overlap two notes. So it'll automatically slide, slide to the note. You can also do the key switch for sliding. There are so many key switches here. Like this video could be three hours long. I'm, I'm not gonna go like every single articulation here, guys. There's actually a really cool video that Max did himself where he's actually, they recreated a Lorna Shore, I think it's a Hellfire song, uh, using Odin 3 and it sounds incredible. So you can see uh, some more complex, complex, complicated programming that you can do uh, to make your guitar sound very realistic. Uh, and in the advanced tab, I really didn't touch this very much, but you can change the tuning from a standard to the various uh, double drop tunings. I just kept it at standard because I was playing a guitar in standard tuning. My, you can't see it here, but the red one behind me is in C sharp. So I was playing standard. So all the chord shapes were standard. So I left it like that. Uh, you can change the slide speed. You can detune. And then you can force pick attack, uh, add palm mute static, realign the phase, make sure everything's nice and tight, and then do auto sustain. So there are a lot of things that you can toggle and automate. For example, in Cubase, it's very easy. I could just hit the W button here automate it turn it on 
Now I have an automation lane and I can automate it further however I want, which is exactly what I did for Vibrato. I'll show you here in a second. But everything here that used to be a pain in the ass about having to trigger everything has somewhat been automated. So the quality of life is a lot higher for programming. It'll be a lot easier to get your ideas out faster and they're just gonna sound better straight away, all right? Uh, you can pick the different pickups. I think I showed you that already. Panned, if you wanna do a guitar one panned, things like this. So let me show you what I did here with the cleans. As you can see here, there's a force vibrato that I put in here on a particular note, all right? To make sure I'd get a little bit of extra vibrato on the string, because that's how I was playing it in real life. If you listen carefully. Just a little wiggle. And I was just getting a little wiggle in there. And then what I did was I just put that into the, oops, that's the wrong thing here. Yeah. I put it into the program right here. So watch when it triggers. There we go. So I'm just triggering or I'm automating the force vibrato trigger that only triggers exactly on the note that I want. This is significantly easier than it was back in the day where you would have to open up an automation lane and do it by hand. If they didn't even have these amplitudes or speed or attack, anything, you just kind of had to go by ear and see where it sounded good, right? So you can automate this and it sounds really nice. Uh, you'll notice here in the MIDI that I specifically told the instrument to play on certain strings. So if I open the instrument here, if you look up on top, these are the triggers for the various strings. So if we look down here, string eight, seven, six, five, four, two, one. And if, we, if you watch that down here when I'm playing, that is exactly how I played it on the real guitar. Just I have six strings, so the C sharp string would be open, but it still sounds pretty much the same and it sounds fantastic. So you have the ability to pick the exact string and basically fret that you want to play on so, I mean, for example, if you were not a guitar player or and you want to just demo something, for the most part, it's going to sound pretty good. But if you are a guitar player and you really want to pre-pro your stuff to be rather exact, you can play around with the string position and the string notes to get everything kind of in the same range so they sound so the strings sound like they're playing together in the same range. Because what you want to avoid, for example, if you don't force strings, Sometimes you might get notes that are playing way up here. And because Max actually sampled all these notes up here, they're going to sound different than if they were playing the equivalent note uh, on a higher string down here, right down on the neck. So you have all this control to make it sound very realistic and exactly how you want. Um, I will be using this for solos most likely. And by the way, if you do a lot of symphonic music where you just need to have a guitar that you can tuck in, and you want to write with MIDI and either do a pre-pro or that's the final song you're going to use, the Odin's going to be perfect for this. Since, like, honestly, it's going to be perfect for, for couching your guitar tones in a symphonic mix or doing even just regular old pre-pro for death metal, black metal, things like that. You know, and I know that a lot of other videos that you might watch about this, there's going to be a lot of chug 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 gent stuff. Uh, because this is an A-string guitar and F-sharp standard or double drop tuning, I know that stuff's going to happen. So you've got the scrapes, you're going to have the chuggity chug chug Morse code stuff. But I actually went out of my way to write uh, somewhat of a, a melodic idea in more of a song format. So we have clean guitars here, and then I did some drone notes with other notes playing. Right, let's go ahead and this... In this particular tempo, with this particular riff, it's literally indistinguishable from the real guitar tone. Um, a real guitarist will always be better, okay? And a real double track DI will always be better, you know, if you have a great guitar player and things like that. But that's not the point. The point of this instrument is songwriting. If you don't have a guitar or you're not a guitar player and you want to come up with ideas and you want to start fleshing out your guitar tones or your guitar ideas, this is pretty much the best option that you have and there's nothing wrong with it. I don't, it's not cheating, you know, like just 
whatever. Those people are going to say whatever they want. But in this particular instance, you know, I did kind of a, a combination of different riff styles so that I could really show what the Odin 3 can do. So I have more of a slow pace, just down stroke, by the way, all on the, um, on the different, on the different strings. Let's just go down here. There we go. I just made a mistake. We're good now. So my droning note is on the F sharp string. It's not exactly correct like how you would play, play it in real life because this was played on a six string. But the point is it sounds correct and it sounds very good actually. Now, uh, the only thing that still is a little bit of a struggle, and it's just the way it is, are tremolo picked riffs. And seeing that a lot of my style when I play black metal is tremolo picking, I had to put a tremolo riff in here. So here we go. Now, obviously, once you start getting into the higher notes here, a, a little bit higher on the fret, it starts to become obvious it's programmed. However, having the lower velocities to soften the attack, and then when you have the other instruments in the song, it's like... I mean, are you really, that's, now you're really splitting hairs if you want to sit there and go, oh, it's a little bit too perfect. But what I did to help make it sound not too quantized and not too perfect is I came in here and I nudged the guitars a little bit off of time. Kind of similar to how you would do if you'd be editing drums or if you have a tom and a snare hit at the same time, you kind of split the difference of the two. That's what I've done here. I kind of split the difference. I moved the guitar one a little bit to the left as a whole, and guitar two a little bit to the right as a whole, so that the transient is exactly the same. And it helps us create that little small difference to keep the guitars wide, but also to not draw attention to it. Like the transient is perfect on the grid every single time. And it sounds pretty damn good to me. Um, this is an exact riff that I would play. I, I mean, I played it on the guitar and then wrote it into Odin here. And... Sounds freaking good to me. Now you can see up here, I did some different strings based on what the guitars are playing. So the, the way that I forced the string is this is logical, like how you would play it on the guitar. You kind of have all the notes in, a, in, in, your, in your hand group, right? You're not going here to here to here to here to here to here. You know, you're not bouncing all over the fretboard. You're keeping it in the same general area so that the sound is congruent with itself. Uh, same thing with uh, guitar left, right? So this one I did a little bit on purpose to change the tonality of the guitar a little bit to make it a bit more different, right? You don't have to do that. You probably would be just fine without it. So if we could come down here and just do this, it would be the same. Okay. It sounds more congruent, obviously, with that small difference to my ear when the full mix was playing. Just it kind of popped out a little bit more and helped it sound not the same as the previous uh, iteration of the riff, but it doesn't matter. And then obviously as we go up an octave higher, uh, we need to move up on the guitar fret, so that's what we do. Still in the same area on the guitar, right? Alright, so pretty, pretty much exactly how you would play it in real life. Now the chords uh, are the bread and butter of this thing. You can get really thick sounding chords that don't sound like tinny or programmed as it were. But the key is you really need to pay attention to programming it with how the pick moves. You know, pick moves down the string. Uh, 
Uh, and then the chugs are the same. But here I'll show you two different ways that you can you can trigger these chugs. But the the chords are vitally important that you leave a little bit of space so the pick travel makes sense. And then you get these nice big open chords. In my opinion, you could get a pretty damn good pre-pro. And if you're doing electronic music or, like I said, uh, symphonic music, this is going to be pretty much perfect for you, you know, and for solos. Like I say, I can't play guitar solo worth a shit. So, you know, like these, these like sweeps or these hammer-on pull-ups that I'm doing here, which I have programmed here. So you can see here, this C-sharp zero is a downstroke. This is a hammer on and that's a pull up. And then I lowered the velocity of the hammer on pull up so to, to make it more realistic because you're not going to be like, it's not going to be like Guitar Pro, right? That's how a lot of these internet guitarists get found out that their solos are faked on Instagram because all of the transient is perfect. Like when you're hammering on, you don't get a pick transient. So you, you get that Guitar Pro sound. But in this particular instance, you can hear the of the pick and you can probably even bring this down more i mean in solo but you can bring these down more bring the velocity down make the transient a little softer and awesome and then i have a slide down here at the end i mean every guitar player probably ends their solo with a nice slide down right all right Uh, for drums, I'm just using Molnir drums, uh, also from Solemn Tones. I thought it would be cool to kind of like make this the uh, Solemn Tones demo. And then I'm using Sanguine bass down here with just a preset. Didn't touch it. Sounds like this. Drums. Break all together. Okay. Let's jump in a little bit to the uh, programming things a little bit uh, because this is what will take the most amount of time. And like I said, I'm going to link a video down below in the description to Max's video of like an in-depth programming guide. Uh, I think by now you guys can see how good it sounds. So I don't need really to talk about how good it sounds anymore. I would like to talk about the key, uh, the key switching and how the key switching works. So for example, there's two methods of key switching. You just have latch and non-latching. I significantly prefer latching because it always allows me to see what the hell is going on. Like I, I can clearly see I have some key switches going here. Non-latching would be, for example, like I just, I put this note and that's it. If I, it'll be this articulation forever until I put another note at a different articulation. It's really easy to get lost. And in this particular instance, you probably want to do expression maps in Cubase. Uh, it's very popular to do this style of switching for orchestral libraries but i greatly prefer the latching uh method where for as long as there's a note here that's the articulation that's going to play so i can visually see what's going on here and make sure everything lines up so if we watch this so you'll notice here that i have velocity triggers on this side but i have key switch triggers on this side i just wanted to show you two different ways where you could get the palm mutes for example if you look over here, there's velocity triggers. 127, you do a pinch harmonic. 126 to 35 is just your standard alternate picking. And then palm mute, so various degrees, like just a regular palm mute, a more choked palm mute, and then like a super choked, basically a, a dead palm mute here, right? Alternatively, you can write these in for an up pick or a down pick, a semi mute, mute, down pick, mute. Okay, so you can really get detailed with how much you want to choke on the string, how much you want to uh, down pick or up, or if you want to do a down stroke or an up stroke palm mute, because there is a difference. And here is a great example here. The first half of this, I have triggered the palm mutes. The second half of this, I have used velocity layer to trigger.
I think this sounds really good. I mean, this is this is going to be the bread and butter for metal guys, especially the chug chug jet style stuff. But it obviously works all well the chords and uh, tremolo picking, which I just showed you. A couple of other articulations I'll show you really quick here. Like I said, this video is not meant to be a three-hour exhaustive video on how to use this. Uh, it's you're just going to have to experiment. Uh, I mostly just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to create good sounding uh, guitar riffs and guitar guitar lines. So here's more of a solo style with some hammer and pull offs, some slides, and then uh, you know it sounds like this. So we're sliding into a power chord, tremolo picking, sliding up into the next note. All things that you would expect to do if you were playing lead guitar. And that sounds pretty damn good to me. I mean, you could obviously sit there for a long time and make it more realistic and change the lengths and, and how everything's falling on the grid or not falling on the grid. But it's just very easy to use. Now here's some other, just some quick articulations. We have a scrape, I believe, in the beginning here. Yeah, that scrape sounds ridiculous. Uh, you can ch It's not just on one string, by the way. You can change this. How low that is. Go up one octave, see what that does. So you get different timbre of scrapes, right? If you move it up on the string, higher up on the fretboard, you get a different timbre. Obviously, if you're a bit lower, you can do both. Okay, so you have the polyphony options there. Uh, we've got some harmonics. Or, over here are harmonics. Exactly what you would expect. Okay, these are pinch harmonics, I believe. These are natural harmonics. Yep. So, uh, you can put natural harmonics in on perfect uh, purpose to make something sound even a bit more sloppy, but also you can be part of a guitar riff where you're doing like you put your finger over like the fretboard and you like do a up sweep or a down sweep of the of the uh, pick and you get that classic uh, natural harmonic ring type of thing. Uh, plus, you then have the scrapes. You've got bends. Slow and fast bends, different uh, speeds, obviously. Pretty cool. It's pretty incredible. Actually, I'm not really sure how this technology even works or what it's like to program an instrument of this caliber and then make it uh, programmable and playable. But every single note that you see on the fretboard, you can program to play a note, pick scrapes, um, harmonics. You can even do thumb slapping and finger plucking, which I have not the first clue how to play guitar like that. So I'm not even gonna try to, to do that. But I'm, you know, I'm this type of gent, solo guitar style, which has been popular the last five years. You can do that with this instrument. Natural harmonics, scrapes, bends, pull-offs, and then very detailed picking patterns that you can do uh, on your own. Honestly, I think if you are doing pre-pro, for example, if you're writing your own uh, guitar songs, for example, in Guitar Pro, you might want to consider using the Odin because it's going to be a much better sound and it'll probably be significantly more realistic to what you're actually playing. And it'll be easier to write, I think, because in my opinion, you know, it's easier to look at this in a piano roll and write music. You know, I'm so used to seeing it like this. Uh, and if I just want to change something, I can literally grab it and go, yeah, let's go up an octave or let's go down an octave or let's go up a third. And everything goes up a third you know, and I can play it. All right, let's say, you know what, let's go up a third. Okay, cool. Let's see what it sounds like maybe in standard E tuning or something. E, let's go F. Or, so here are in standard tuning. Well, I know you guys are listening in the left ear. I know it's bothering you, but just deal with it. Uh, you know, let's, go, let's go like, uh, fuck it, let's go A.
cool. I mean, so this really allows me, you know, to quickly understand, you know, what key I want to write in, what tuning I might want to write in. It's just really easy. I really like it. So uh, Odin 3, yeah. Odin 3, Solemn Tones and Max have really outdone themselves, pushing the boundaries of guitar instruments. Very easy to use, no contact required. Program is simple, lots of quality of life here, lots of automation that you can do with just switches and buttons instead of having to very difficultly, you know, get in there and try and program it with MIDI. Uh, it's a great instrument, and if you're doing pre-pro or you can't really play lead guitar and you want to write a lead guitar solo that you can send to a friend, here you go. Uh, or if you just can't really work with anybody, it's not possible, you can't record guitars at all, you just really aren't there yet, you can use this instrument, you can get a fantastic uh, pre-production, high quality guitar tone, high quality sound, and you can you know, practice tones with this as well. Like right here, like I say, I just, I'm using my guitar tone that I created that I sell on my website, and it sounds awesome. So you can throw an amp simulator on this and then kind of process it like how you would like with a real guitar through a with an IR or a, or a cabinet, all right? So that's pretty much the video. Highly recommended. Again, it's suited really for songwriting, and if you can't really record guitars, it's a great thing to have, especially for pre-pro. I've been saying this over and over. I'm very impressed with this plugin. I really want to say thanks to Max for reaching out to sponsor this video on the channel. Yes, it's sponsored. Just wanted to mention that. Uh, click the link below to grab it. That's not an affiliate link. I don't get any uh, commissions from the link or anything like that. Only the video is sponsored. So if you click the link and buy, no commissions. But if you have been using Odin 2 for a long time, or you've been in the market for a high quality guitar instrument, and you've really been kind of like, eh, you know, about other solutions, definitely give Odin a look. Um, it's probably going to be exactly what you need, and it's so easy to use and so easy to program. Just, man, I even messaged Max when I was working on this plugin initially, going, wow. Man, can you believe what it was like in 2014 trying to program guitars in contact back in the day? Holy crap. This is so much better and so much easier. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Max always is a big fan of the channel, so he's always watching the comments. He'll probably answer you if you got any questions. And don't forget, I'm leaving a video link down below to a very in-depth walkthrough of programming that Max himself did for that Lorna Shore song. So again, there there really is no equal, I don't think. You know, I think Odin basically is the best uh, product on the market for this uh, instrument and in this space. So there you go. If you need a guitar instrument, this is what you're looking for. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.